Reason number 10 why you should speak in unknown tongues through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is reason number 10 of 10, and today's going to be a great podcast. So buckle up, take notes, and let's get into it. Welcome to another powerful show of prophetic revelation and insight. Straight Talk with Wayne, your daily source of prophetic revelation, prayer, and the Christian news that you need. As part of the thesecondadam.com, Pastor Wayne invites you to listen, enjoy, and share these anointed messages of hope and glory. Reason number 10, why you should speak in tongues from Kenneth Hagin's book. This is the booklet, Why Tongues, again. Uh, thanks for being here with us. I am Wayne Sutton from thesecondadam.com, pastorwaynesutton.com. I truly believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is something that is priceless to me, that know that the Spirit of the living God lives within me and I can communicate to the Father through the Spirit. It's so many, so many reasons. I'm going to give you 10 from Kenneth Hagin's. And we're on reason number 10 today. So if this is your first time and you want to go back and learn more, just go back into the uh, podcast vault and let's go. Reason number 10, and then we're going to go into the conclusion of the book. So, and then the next few podcasts, I'm going to have some personal uh, stories about praying in the spirit, etc. Reason number 10, speaking in tongues brings the tongue under subjection. James 3.8, James 3.8, but the tongue can taint no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Listen to that again. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Yielding the tongue to the Holy Spirit to speak with other tongues is a giant step toward fully yielding all of our members to God. For if we can yield this most unruly member... We can yield any member. Wow. Think about this for a moment. So I'm going to cut away from the book for just a minute. Many people have problems with lust of their eyes, sexual perversion with literally their body, addictions, things that are unruly, right? Of the body. A body does not, uh, you know, tr- I mean, obviously you can think in your heart and, and and sin, but there's also things that happen when the body gets involved. If somebody thinks of having sex with someone outside of marriage, the Bible says if you look upon a woman with lust, the same as committing adultery. At the same time, if the body actually goes and commits adultery, fornication, homosexuality, whatever it may be, then, or any kind of sexual perversion, then there's other, there can be other repercussions to come with that. So, if I can pray in an unknown tongue, I'm saying this tongue that speaks, this tongue that has spoken curse words, this tongue that has gossiped, these tongue, this tongue that has cursed people with my words, if I can say, no, I choose to, it's going to be subject to the voice of the Lord, and the Spirit's going to give utterance. What else in our body? What else can we surrender? What other unruly member of the body? Pray in the Spirit. And say, Lord, thank you that my tongue is come and my words are coming under subjection to you. And let it be the same in the rest of my body. Now let's go back into the book, The Public Side of Tongues. It says, in conclusion, I want to point out that while we have dealt primarily with tongues in the individual's believer's private life, it is also true there's a public side to tongues. First, when people receive the Holy Ghost publicly, they speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Secondly, the church is edified by speaking with other tongues in public assembly with an interpretation. Paul plainly stated to prophesy to speak unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. But he said, greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. Paul is saying that tongues with interpretation is equivalent to prophecy. If the utterance in tongues is interpreted so that the church can understand what is said, then the one prophesying is not greater. 
illustrate two nickels equal one dime. However, two nickels are not a 10 cent piece. Prophecy is the dime, the 10 cent piece. Naturally, it would be better to have the dime, prophecy, than to have the nickel in utterance and tongues. But if the interpretation, another nickel, along came with it, the two would be equivalent to the dime. Now, you may need to go back and listen to that again. <laughs> Let me say here that prophesying is not preaching. If prophesying were preaching, then you wouldn't have to make any preparation to preach. But you have to study and prepare to preach. Paul said to study to show thyself approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2.15. You don't have to study to speak with tongues or to interpret. You don't have to study to prophesy. Of course, when one is preaching under the inspiration of the Spirit, and suddenly says things he's never thought of, that's inspiration and an element of prophecy. Tongues with interpretation edifies the church. When used in line with the Word of God, speaking with tongues with interpretation convinces the unbeliever of the reality of the presence of God and often causes him to turn to God and be saved. Jesus said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. That can be private or public. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That can be private or public. They shall speak with new tongues. This too is both private and public. Of course, we don't want prolonged praying in tongues in the service because unless there is an interpretation, folks don't know what is being said and therefore <clears throat> they're not edified. If people praying in service or lifting their hands and praying, it is all right to pray in tongues. I stand on the platform and pray that way every night. But when congregation ceases praying, I cease praying. The congregation wouldn't be edified if I went on and on. We do need we do need to know how to use what we have to the greatest advantage. This was a great book. Again, I recommend picking it up. Uh, I think you can pick it up on Amazon for just a few bucks. It's 37 pages called Why Tongues. There's another book from Hagen, and it is called Tongues Beyond the Upper Room. It's 251 pages. We're not going to do a podcast breakdown of each one of those. Um, and I think this is from... Yes, yes. So this is Kenneth Hagen as well. Um, and so... This will be a book for us to, for you. I would recommend for you to grab a hold of. It goes into the Holy Spirit, common objections to speaking in tongues, and so much more. But I think that as you delve into this, delve into your heart. Lord, if, I, if I've been gifted, if I had the gift of praying in tongues, may I pray even more and even more and even more. And I'm telling you guys, it's up to you to take responsibility. If I haven't been gifted, if I haven't received the gift, Lord, open up that gift in my life. In Jesus' name. Let me receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, go over to PastorWayneSutton.com. Name, email address, phone number, receive the latest, greatest updates. If there's something I can help you with, let me know. I'm excited. I am excited about working with you guys. And if you need counseling, let's connect. May God receive all the glory. And I believe in you because I believe in the Jesus Christ within you. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Straight Talk with Wayne. Do you need prayer, counseling, or personal prophetic ministry? Then go to thesecondadam.com for more information. And be sure to sign up at yourprophecynews.com for the latest updates, free resources, and prophetic news. God bless.